I will come into this brief introduction on Active Directory and it will be a brief understanding about Active Directory. In Microsoft Network Operating Systems, Active Directory exists as a function. Among other functions like advanced level hardware, software and network configuration services, deployment of business applications and web applications, providing central interface to manage users, implementing security and other administrative processes, plus managing and monitoring client computers or client operating systems. At this level, we need to know how the Active Directory function has become so important and acts as one of the most fundamental functions of network operating systems. Active Directory service is one of the single best network function added in Microsoft Network Operating Systems, where this function was started in Windows 2000 and modifications in it were made in the upgrades of Windows 2003 and Windows 2008. From then, Active Directory became a very important part in network server operating systems. Active Directory services exist with a number of terminologies, including directory, object, schema, domain, domain controller, tree, forest, and organization unit. But what do they all mean? A directory simply means a listing of corporate network objects. Only that. A listing of corporate network objects. And what are those objects? Objects are the components that make up a complete network or elements that make up a complete network. For example, computers, user groups, user accounts, group accounts, printers, scanners, a computer, a server computer, a client computer, a printer, a wireless router, a scanner, user accounts, among others. Of course, after understanding network objects, that brings us to a terminology known as a schema. Because we have seen a range of network objects, there should be a specific way of how Active Directory manages all the objects in a corporate network. So, by administrators having a special way of organizing databases and structuring databases, we happen to understand that a schema is a structure design for how object attributes will be stored and maintained in the Active Directory directory services. So, when coming up with database structures, every group of objects, let's say computers, network printers, network scanners, network file share computers, are given special computer database alignments, and those are the so-called schema. A schema is just a structure that indicates how objects' attributes will be aligned, how the information for each object will be stored in the database for easy understanding of network infrastructure. A domain. 
A domain is a pool of network computers that share a common name, like, for example, Airtel.com, MTN.com, Moops.se.ug, and domain controllers are just computers or servers that exist on a corporate network only and only to manage and control network services, resources, and security. Someone wonders what we mean by a tree. A tree is where a domain has got branches. So when a domain gets subdomains, it turns into a tree. What about a forest? A forest is a group of domains. Let's say Airtel buys MTN. MTN has different structures, schema structures. Airtel has different schema structures. So when MTN buys Airtel or Airtel buys MTN, you will find that that will automatically become a forest. And what about organization units? Remember, we said that when a domain creates new subdomains, it automatically becomes a tree. So those subdomains characterizes a tree. And within them, there should be some points where administrative tasks should be done. And that is when an organizational unit is created for administrative purposes. So an organizational unit is an administrative container managing all objects in a given subdomain. When you happen to look at that diagram, we have a server, we have a network resource like a printer and a scanner and a wireless router, among other devices on the network. In this case, that server will act as a domain controller. It controls all the domain activities. It manages all the activities that are taking place on the network. Because on that network, we need, everyone needs to print. Most of us need to access wireless services. Most of us need to make phone calls. So a domain controller is just a server computer controlling all activities that are taking place on the network. However, a network has various services. We have resources like printers, routers, and uh, scanners. We have file share computers. We have user accounts. We have group accounts. So a domain controller is intended to only and only manage network activities. In our next image, we are going to look at an example of a corporate network. In a corporate network, we have a number of activities and resources. File sharing, file share is one of an activity that can take place on a corporate network. Network resources would include 
wireless networks, scanners and printers. And on a corporate network, we have a domain controller server, which manages all activities that run on our corporate network. These activities include assigning user accounts, printing, sharing, creating user groups, uh, she allowing to share on wireless internet, and among other activities, also including phone calls. In our next diagram, let us have a look at an example of a domain. We have taken Airtel Uganda to be one of the examples of a domain. And in this case, the domain name for Airtel is airtel.co.ug. Airtel has a number of branches around the country, and one of them is Mbale, whose subdomain name is Mbale dot airtel dot co dot ug Arua whose subdomain name is Arua dot airtel dot co dot ug Jinja whose subdomain is Jinja dot airtel dot co dot ug and finally Barara whose subdomain is airtel sorry whose subdomain is Barara dot airtel but we happen to see an indication of an organizational unit or unit. Here, we just want to emphasize our understanding about an organizational unit. In every subdomain, we require to have what we call an administrative unit where administrative activities take place and this happens to be called the organizational unit so an organizational unit is just an administrative container with all the administrative rights to manage objects on a given subdomain and here we have seen an organization unit example in mbarara.airtel.co.ug. So this means that every sub domain must have an organization unit for administrative purposes as may be aligned by the chief network administrator or the chief network engineer. After this, we are going to see how we can end up with a forest. However, this diagram indicates an example of a tree. Because on it, there are branches, and the branches are arua.airtel.co.ug, ginger.airtel.co.ug, mbara.airtel.co.ug, and mbari.airtel.co.ug. This qualifies it to be a tree. Now, let us understand what we call a forest. A forest, it is just an indication of two domains with different domain names. And this is one known as Airtel and Warid. Now, we all know that Airtel bought off Warid. And Warid had its own structures, the so-called schemas. And Airtel also had its own structures, which we also know as database schemas. This brings us to an understanding that after Airtel having bought Warid, there was supposed to be communication, network communication. And the network communication between Airtel and Warid established a one-way explicit trust. One-way 
explicit trust from Airtel to Warrior. A communication between subdomains under a given domain or under a tree is known as a two way implicit transitive trust. So, a two way implicit transitive trust is a communication that exists among any two subdomains under a tree. So having understood that the communication between two subdomains under a domain or under a tree is known as a two-way implicit transitive trust, we can now further memorize properly that a communication between two different domains is known as a one-way explicit trust. Those communications are intended to make sure that administrators can configure the bolt of network into what they properly feel comfortable working with. So after that, let us understand the various or the other issues about Active Directory. Now, we are moving into understanding the purpose of Active Directory services. And this is now becoming an obvious issue. The main purpose of Active Directory service is to control network activity to authorize and authenticate users. What is to authorize? It is to make sure that whoever claims to log in as is, is exactly the right person logging in as declared in the computer system or the computer database. And authorization means only and only accessing files and sharing resources that are being accepted at the user level. Another purpose of Active Directory is a centralized security management of network services and activities and centralized management of all network objects. I remember telling that network objects include user groups, user accounts, computers, printers, scanners, wireless routers, file share computers, among others. Now, after understanding the purpose of Active Directory services, which include controlling network activities, authorizing and authentication, where we understood that authorization is making sure that the logged in user is exactly the user who he claims to be. And authorization and authentication as where the activities accessed by the user are the rightful activities that the user is supposed to access. And centralized security management, centralized management of all network objects, and centralized management of common tasks. What are the common tasks? Changing user accounts, changing passwords, configuring user groups, oh, adding user rights, removing user rights, deleting accounts. All these activities are purposed in the Active Directory services. But after that, we shall go on to our next topic known as the Active Directory Directory Services Protocols and Active Directory Directory Services Benefits. The Active Directory Directory Services service was developed aiming at an efficient management of objects on a computer network and it resolves all the information requests from objects within a database using the LDAP protocol 
and the SSL protocol. The LDAP protocol is a lightweight data access protocol. SSL protocol is the secure socket layer protocol. And all these protocols are aimed at clear and proper data access resolution or information access resolution. Now, let us have a look at the directory benefits. The directory services only simplifies the administrative end user work while enhancing security for the organization. Administrators enjoy a centralized user and rights management as well as a centralized control over computer users configurations and active directory, directory services group policy and features. Users can authenticate once and then seemingly access any resource in the domain for which they are authorized to access. And all that happens on a single logon. Files are stored in a central position and they can be shared by any user on a network. Backup resources are also managed on the network. Properly understood by the ICT team and the business community. So the ICT team ensures business continuity with help of Active Directory services. Lastly, Active Directory services enable proper planning for network users and resources. Thank you for watching.